And then I heard that voice say, and I thought, well, I thought they were going to live in this voice. Said, but what if they don't live? And I thought, well, that's Satan. I'm going to rebuke that. And then I heard it again. That's Satan. I'm going to rebuke that. Mm. And then about the third time I heard it again, I went, man, I know that voice. That wow. is not Satan. And I just simply said, I, I literally said, oh, my gosh, they could die? Mm. And the scripture came to me that the sun shines on the just and the unjust alike. Yes. And I realized right then and there that God was asking me a question. What will you do? If they yeah. didn't live, what would you do, Janice? Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. We've got quite a show for you. They were the darlings of contemporary Christian music when the beloved group, The Archers, led by Tim and Steve Archer, invited their younger sister to join the band in the late 1970s. It was the perfect blend, creating a sound that most of us will never forget. The Grammy Award winning and two-time Grammy nominated group had the honor and privilege of performing at the White House. They helped to pioneer Christian music and saw thousands of lives impacted by the message of their music. So without further ado, Janice, I want to welcome you here, my friend. I am so honored that you're with us today. Oh, thank you so much, Brenda. I'm the one who's honored. I got uh, to meet you at a conference we were speaking at together, and um, it was just love at first sight. <laughs> yes, we just met that, in Florida. Yes. Oh, uh, it really was love at first sight. We were both speaking for She Tour in yes. Bradenton, Florida, and uh, I I saw such a wellspring of mercy and love and humility coming from you, and I thought this this person uh, I could be friends with forever. So, you know, I, I love that your feet are grounded and uh, you, you've you experienced, I'm sure that much of that though has come through some of the experiences and the pain because we can't always live on the mountaintops. Uh, nope. You know, so much of life is really in the valleys and uh, I know that uh, you married into the Cruz family. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you and your husband met and that transition for you. Well, um, I had I got invited by a mutual friend who was uh, actually the star of a show called Facts of Life. Her name is Lisa Welchel, and a sweet girl that I had met, and she was a believer, and she had was in Southern California. I lived in Southern California, and the Cruises are from Texas, but they were touring through Southern California, and she invited wow. me to one of their concerts. Um, and so I went with her, and um, we met. I, I saw the Cruise family that night, and as we were going there, I kept thinking, oh, so this is the group that beat us out for Best Contemporary Christian Album one year at the Dove Awards. <laughs> And uh, I remember thinking, I think the archers are more contemporary than they are. Uh, how oh, awful yeah. is that, right? <laughs> and then I, I walked into their concert. We got there just a little bit late and walked into their concert, and they were doing two shows back to back. And so I get to her. I got to hear a whole lot of the Cruz family, and they were phenomenally mm. talented. Um, yeah. I became a fan that night and basically met my husband that night. And a year and one day later, we were married. <gasps> wow. <laughs> so um, he actually, it was weird. He had seen me three months before because they were we were all at the maybe center old roberts university um doing like a couple days big gospel thing contemporary christian music thing yeah. and a night they weren't singing he came to see our show and saw me oh. that night and went home and dreamed he married me and then oh. three months la later fast forward we meet at this concert <laughs> in san bernardino california and he went home that night after we met and dreamed he married me and a wow. year and one day later, he married me. And so, oh, that's um, wonderful. Years, we're into this 40 years, and um, I've just renewed his option recently. So I think I'm stuck with him forever. <laughs> and I love so. it. And, and what a couple you guys make. I just love what you're doing. But life really probably changed a lot at that point. I mean, being married is much different than being a young 16-year-old and single and having a wonderful career. Tell us how life began to change, what it looked like, and uh, uh, some of the, the things that you processed. Yeah, well, um, 
you know, for me, um, I was really blessed. I was, I, I was born really late in my parents' life. I had four big brothers. A lot of people think the Archers is just Tim and Steve, but we yeah. actually have two older brothers. Um, in 2019, unfortunately, we lost our oldest brother. Gary went home to be with the Lord. Um, but um, yeah, so there was four big brothers, and I had my dad, and I was the only girl. And so I was... I really grew up in a home with lots of love and lots of affection. And my dad was a pastor, so I grew up in the local church. Um, that's kind of where I learned to sing. And so I was the biggest fan of the archers you could imagine. But yeah. um, really for me, I kind of grew up in this really loving, sheltered world. And if I had any problems, my dad or my big brothers could fix them, right? Mm -hmm. And then I married John, and he came from this incredible godly heritage as well. I mean, they're just some of my favorite people in the world now are the yeah. Cruz family. Obviously, yeah. it's my family too. But, I mean, I, I was in such a beautiful world. And then at a very young age, I was only 16 when I started with the Archers. And very quickly, the Lord opened amazing doors for us that— even other gospel artists weren't, weren't getting the privilege of. And I was so, I don't, I don't even think I fully grasped what was happening mm. to us. But sure. just God and his graciousness and his favor yeah. just gave us some really sweet experiences. But um, my husband and I, after a few years of being married, decided that we wanted to have babies. Um, and so I faced a situation when that happened where I was told we'd never have children. We had tried mm. for a long time, couldn't have kids. And um, so finally, we decided to see a fertility specialist and prayed about it after we found out what it entailed and got into the program. And we were so blessed within two months, we conceived these babies. Um, but little did I know that at only five and a half months along, I was going to give birth to those babies. And so they were only wow. one pound, five ounce, one pound, nine ounce. And boy, did my world wow. turn around. You know, I'm just traveling and touring and enjoying married life and enjoying, um, you know, ministry with my brothers and doing all these really wonderful things and recording and touring and all of this. And now suddenly, I mean, I'm sitting in a NICU unit all the time, listening yeah. to the doctors bombard me, not, not details with one baby, but two babies mm -hmm. to where you just can't even hardly remember what they said about the first when they get done with the second. But um, I think that was really when I, I met a moment in my life where I went. I literally had a moment pretty quick where I went, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am facing something my dad can't fix. My right. brothers can't fix. My husband can't fix. Mm -hmm. You know, um, being, a, being a, a, a contemporary Christian artist can't fix. I mean, none right. of this is going to impact where yeah. I am right now. Except yeah, that that's I have a hard prayer army. Hard slam into a brick wall. I mean, yeah, man, yeah, bam. I brought my life to it like a, mm -hmm. a just, I mean, really, yeah, Halt. that's a great yeah. analogy. And mm -hmm. so um, that was really where I, I think John and I have talked about it over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, you really find out how deep your roots go in God when you face yeah. moments like that because that's true. Um, there's mm -hmm. really nowhere to turn but God. And they really gave mm -hmm. us no hope. They had never mm -hmm. saved a set. The boys were 25 week gestational babies and they had mm -hmm. never saved a set of 25 gestational week twins ever at that wow. hospital. Wow. And so there really wasn't much hope, but you know, mm -hmm. I remember delivering them and going into the, um, I delivered them and then I went into to go see them. And I remember on the way, they were wheeling me in a wheelchair to go see them because they wouldn't let me see them in the delivery room. And so mm -hmm. I remember going in there thinking, you know, but we have God, we're going to come home. Yeah. It's it's going to be okay. You know, we're a family of faith. And I was raised in a charismatic church, man, I believed in miracles. My boy right. altar calls and prayed for the sick and I saw him recover and I saw mm -hmm. demons. I mean, I saw incredible yeah. things in my life growing up in the spiritual world. And I remember when my eyes saw them, I thought, oh, dear God, the first thing I saw when my eyes met reality, I came yeah. in with all this faith. And then I had to look at reality and I thought nothing this small could survive outside the womb. And I just yeah. began to weep wow. uncontrollably. And and through um, and then we left. We prayed over them. We found some vitamin E oil and anointed them with oil. And we <laughs> prayed over them. And That's we sweet. asked his supernatural power to intervene in their natural realm and do what only he could do at this point. And when we got into the room they were putting me in, a bunch of our pastors had already uh, arrived. We prayed um, again, and we believed. And our pastor said, having, after having done all, stand, right? That's what the Bible says. Yeah, so we exactly. did. And then the next morning we got up and... 
here we are, these preacher's kids who memorized all this scripture growing up, right, in church, yeah. and I couldn't really think of a scripture. And so my husband just opened the Bible and thought, I mean, we were both mm -hmm. just kind of numb, you know, and exhausted. Yeah. And my eyes landed on, his eyes landed on a scripture, and he said, Janice, this is God. This is for us. And wow. this is what we'll stand on. And it was Philippians mm -hmm. 1, 6. He has begun a good work in you. will be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. so he said, you know, God started their lives in the womb. He's the one that gives us the ability to even create life. He said, so he is their creator. Yeah. He's just going to finish this job outside the womb so people can hear and his name will be glorified. And boy, yeah. was it. I've told this mm. story all over the world. You know, obviously it was a long journey, a lot of surgeries. Yeah. They almost died. I remember at about six weeks they had lived mm. and they were the talk of the hospital. Nobody could believe it. they were alive. They would talk to me when I came in the front door of the hospital. Hey, here the twins are doing good. Wow. <laughs> and um, I walked in to find out they were dying. One of oh. them contracted a virus and was dying. And man, the doctor with tears in his eyes, because we found out that all three of the neonatologists, the neonatologists were born again believers. So the short of the story oh. is, is they basically had to sit down and tell us they had contracted a virus and that they were probably going to die. Mm. And I just looked at him all of a sudden, my Christian training kind of popped mm. in and I said, well, when, cause I felt compassion for them cause they were crying. And I said, well, God never promised it'd be easy, but he just promised he'd never leave us in, or forsake us. And then yeah. I went and then I went into and then I just got up and walked out, left them all in there and shut the door. And I literally wow. <laughs> the next thought I had was, OK, God, I'm fixing to find you and we're going to have a conversation. Yeah. I was going to let God have it. Why would you let me conceive? <laughs> Why would you let him live six weeks just oh. to take them? And, you know, you have that. But that was that moment. That moment changed my life forever because I mm. fell on my face in a waiting room like prostrate, you know, just yeah. flat. And no, nobody was in there, thank God. Probably didn't even come in because they thought, don't go in there. There's a crazy lady in there on the floor bawling. And I just said, God, why, why? And I heard this voice say, Janice, what if they don't live? And I saw this flash through my mind, like a, this is your life. Like, mm -hmm. man, look at all these amazing things that have happened to you. And, and what about this? And then I heard that voice say, and I thought, well, I thought they were going to live in this voice of, but what if they don't live? And I thought, well, that's Satan. I'm going to rebuke that. And then I heard it again. That's Satan. I'm going to rebuke that. Mm -hmm. And then about the third time I heard it again, I went, man, I know that voice. That wow. is not Satan. And I just simply said, I, I literally said, oh my gosh, they could die. Mm -hmm. And the scripture came to me that the sun shines on the just and the unjust light. Yes. And I realized right then and there that God was asking me a question. What will you do? If they yeah. didn't live, what would you do, Janice? And I just had a, this wow. is your life again. And I just, throughout my life, I couldn't deny the mm. favor and the love and the grace and the mercy of God and all of my blessings. And I thought, Lord, if you, if they die, I'm going to want to curse you and die mm. myself. And, and then the story of Job just popped into my head. Thank God I sat and actually paid attention when my dad was preaching. <laughs> and I literally, literally in that moment, just remembered that Job lost everything. And then his physical body was stricken. And his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? And he said, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed yes. be the name of the Lord. And I, yeah. it still makes me emotional when I talk about it because oh. it was a defining moment in my life. And I was never the same. Mm. And I realized, okay, so... If I curse you, if you, my babies die and I just curse you because I don't yeah. understand why you did this and you allowed this to happen, then I'll have no babies, but I'll have yeah. no God to comfort me. Mm. And right then and there, I realized, oh, wow, you really are the greatest treasure of my life. Like, I can't live this life without you, whether they're here or whether they go. And so I just said, Lord, if you let them live, I'll serve you all the days of my life. So that was, wow. and, and, and if you, and then I said, and if they don't live, I'll serve you all the days of my life. It's you and me to the end. No deals. No deals. Mm, Just you and me. Absolutely. And that absolutely. forged something in me, Brenda, like I've never, I've yeah. never been the same. Yeah. I've and you haven't the stopped that tra trajectory. I mean, that changed. It really shifted your life into a whole new place, I believe. And, and I, I, you know, we're, we have such a propensity to want to run away from pain. And, and our idea of God's blessing is all about those triumphal experiences, you know, the success and 
all the the material things, the you know the things that we tend to want to give us identity because we're searching for significance and in importance, and um, oftentimes we're not paying attention to the things that maybe are buried beneath the soil that God wants to put his finger on. And I really believe that it's his mercy that walks us through those difficult valleys. And the the outcome of your story is so amazing because God, when you did anoint those two babies with that vitamin E oil, I (laughs) mean, the miracle was done, but God was using it to do a deeper work in your heart and, and have oh, that yeah. conversation with you, but walk, take us forward because yeah, y- your yeah. sons well, have just brought so much glory to God and have really, enriched your lives. Have, and you know, I mean, I didn't even tell you all the challenges they had and all the surgeries. I mean, one of them on top of everything else had a life threatening liver disease. He was on life uh, liver life supporting meds till he was about two years old and he went in for an open liver biopsy to check it again and we got a miracle total miracle the liver had reversed and they had told us you know you're going to have to go on the waiting list for a liver transplant probably and you need to know most babies die before they get them i mean just it wasn't that the bad news ended the night we prayed for him or the day i got that scripture the next morning i mean it was or even six weeks when they made it through that virus and they lived and they survived and they thrived. I mean, it was still such an up and down. I mean, I remember a therapist coming in, drawn a squiggly line and said, what's that? And I said, I don't know. She (laughs) said, my husband said a roller coaster. And she said, good answer. Welcome to your life. And it has been that. But uh, we brought them home at five and a half months. They weighed about five pounds each. And um, actually, um, and I've, we've told their story. I've told it all over Europe. We've told it around the world. Um, and it really, it's crazy because I literally was hesitant to tell it. And the Lord said, don't ever. I said, because a lot of moms didn't, their babies didn't survive. Lord, I can't go tell this. Yeah. He said, you just tell who I was in it and let yeah. me deal with their hearts. Mm. And, and I think that's the big thing for me, Brenda. I got introduced on that journey. Not only did I have that resolve in my heart that no matter what this outcome is, this is where me and Jesus stand. Yeah. But also, I didn't realize that it was the hard places in life, the difficult things in life, the betrayals, the disappointments, Mm -hmm. the discouragement, the unanswered, that prayer didn't turn out the way I wanted it answered. Those moments in life introduced me to aspects who Jesus is mm. that I probably would have never known he would. Oh, and you're that too? Oh, right. Because <laughs> my life took me there and I'm like, oh, and you're that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, and you're that. He is more than enough. His yes. grace is sufficient. I sang about that stuff. I talked mm. about that stuff. But the Lord took me through seasons of life where I had to start living that stuff. It couldn't just be stuff I sang about from a platform. Mm -hmm. It had to be stuff I was going home and having to live and walk out in my everyday life. And that's when the songs that we sang as the archers. In fact, my brothers and I were just together the other day preparing for something new. And one of my brothers said, oh, my gosh, I've been listening to these songs. And he said... I'm like sitting weeping again over the lyrics of these songs that we had the privilege Mm -hmm. to record. And I said, yeah, because our lives were impacted before everybody else's were by the music we did. But I will tell you honestly, Brenda, my life has been way more impacted by the songs later in life than even when I recorded them. Because I was so young, I hadn't lived enough life with Jesus to understand what those words Mm -hmm. really meant in the trenches of life. The good, the bad, the ugly. yeah, you, you could not have put that better. Uh, I've often said that we have to really bump into our, because we're such good per- performers, you know, all of us. And uh, it, 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 we have to bump into our humanity and the end of ourselves. Uh, that's the point. That's the place that uh, we really truly find Jesus to be the hope on our horizon. And uh, that we, I think, find ourselves and uh, I think before that, if we're all wrapped up in uh, performance or we just don't have the depth yet of knowing the experience with him, um, there's a little disconnect. Out, yeah. Yes, very much so. And one of the things I've found out, um, I've said in, in later years, is that I've learned that you don't get to bypass your humanity just because you're a Christian. That's I good. I in Jesus. My life is founded on his word. His promises mm-hmm. for me are yes and amen. Yeah. I mean... He has the power to help you forgive. He has the power to heal. He has the power to restore. 
you know, everything, marriages, our marriages has mm-hmm. gone through challenges. I mean, yeah. we've never betrayed each other, but mm-hmm. to, to have a 40 year old marriage takes a lot oh. of work and a lot yeah. of humility and a lot of dying mm-hmm. to yourself. And I'm a high, we're a big <sighs> believers. I should say I'm high on counseling, Christian counseling. And yes. On any time we've needed it, we go, we've recommended it as pastors to anybody and everybody. But um, I, I did find that, you know, you don't get to bypass your humanity just because you're a believer. Right. But I have to take my humanity to Jesus. Yes. And let him be in the process with me. Yeah. Otherwise, I go, I'm going to go dark places. Yeah. I may not make it back. And the residue of what's happened to me may never go away. It's like I told John one time, I said, man, I'm going to go see a counselor because we've just been through something. We've gone through a difficult time in ministry. And I thought you know what, I'm going to go see a counselor because Mm -hmm. as we transition, I am going to make sure that I leave here with the treasures God has deposited in this difficult place and that I don't leave with the residue that the enemy Mm -hmm. wants to to linger in me. But I am empowered to process this through God's help and Christian psychologists, you know, I, yeah. so I'm a big advocate of that. That's part of what's helped me come to a place of even greater faith and to keep winning in my faith and to keep yeah. persevering and having enough grit to endure until victory comes. Yes. That's Whatever, powerful. No, it's powerful what you're saying because the victory comes on the daily basis. It is the journey is what it's all about. We're so so busy looking at the golden ring, you know, and and God wants us in to be present in the moment. And so really he's doing us a favor by allowing us to experience these things where we do begin to understand the weakness of our humanity, the fragility of our humanity and the need for us, our savior to uh, who completes us. And he's the one who, you know, we when we come to him and we stand in his glory, we're able to see who we are in him and in his love as completed and, and whole. I think, you know, the world is hurting right now, my friend, and as you well know, I mean, people are struggling and and, um, the world conditions are causing a lot of the anxieties and, uh, you know, fears and things to come to the surface and really be magnified, I think, in, in this season. And this is affecting relationships. It's affecting homes. There's a lot, there's a lot of abuse. We're told that's been that's taken place even over the last two years when we had a lot of social distancing and lockdowns and uh, a lot of abuses were taking place in homes and you know not everybody has experienced the um, many mountaintop experiences let alone maybe even one maybe you know there are there are lives out there that have been just uh, stuck in the trenches and they don't know the way out. And I'd like for you to give a word of encouragement to uh, not just to where we are uh, as as a world and, and a divided people, but also to those who are pretty desperate and saying, I don't even see the point of living anymore. Could you just speak to that for a moment? It'd be my honor to. What I would say to that is that we're living in a world right now where, and it's, it's hard to accept this, but it's really true. I've never been alive in a moment in history where the scripture, they called light darkness and darkness light. That's where we are. Mm-hmm. They yeah. call what's light dark and what's mm-hmm. dark light. Mm-hmm. And so one of the encouragements I would say to anybody out there today is, man, the, the world is trying to tell us who we are. And, and one of the things I had to learn is that Jesus is okay with my my anger, my disappointment, my fear. I can come to him just like I am with the anxiety, with fear, with regret, with whatever it is. I can come to him because first of all, they don't define my value. They didn't place value on me. Jesus placed value on me when he sent his only son to a cross for me. Wow. A life was given for me. I have enormous value. And so first of all, don't let the world tell you what your value is or isn't. Let God tell you what your value. Get into the word of God and find out through him that you're so, you were so valuable. He sent his son. But I would also say he can handle where you're at and what you're feeling and bring that to him. Bring yeah. exactly where you are today to Jesus and, and trust and just lean into him. I don't care how, 
how much pain you're in, what you're feeling, because in him, his perfect love that you will encounter when you lean into him is what drives out all fear. It's what drives out doubt. It's what it what cures anxiety. It's what it's perfect love. His perfect love is the only thing that brought peace to my life when all of my circumstances. I found myself experiencing peace when every circumstance in my life said I should not have peace. I had million dollar babies. How was I going to pay for those? Wow. Gospel music doesn't play like the secular world. Like, how am I going <laughs> to do this? Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's, that's a minor, that's a simple example compared to many others I, I was yeah. in where I could not find peace. And I thought I would lose my mind. I mean, both of my sons were diagnosed with autism. They have Asperger's. They're very high functioning and they're amazing. And they're going to be 34 next week to God be the glory. But I'm just telling you, it's been a lot. So if you lean into Jesus, whatever your circumstances are, there will be peace. And I have found peace that surpassed my, my, my circumstances. My circumstances dictated I shouldn't had it, yeah. but I had it. And you, it, you mm. can have because he's still the great I am and he's mm. still we all read the end of the book we still know who wins and yeah. whatever comes in this world Jesus will be victorious and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord so I just encourage you today let him love you right where you at you're at no don't don't even apologize for it Jesus here's where I am help me today here's my pain yeah. my anxiety my fear my doubts my worries the unknown just come today and and rest in him today we're not even promised tomorrow why not right. just let him love you today right where you at and and go to him for the peace go mm. to him for everything you need he's never failed me never failed me not once ever mm. the world has my husband has my kids has life has circumstances have but jesus never has mm. You know, that's so powerful. And it, 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 when you think about what pain does, it, it brings the beauty that we didn't even have before. It brings dimension. And we come through things, you know, like my friend Rabbi Steve Leader says, we come out of it more beautiful than before. Grief and oh, hardships, yeah. uh, the pains of life, God is there to walk us through them so that they don't destroy us. And fast forward real quick. Uh, I don't want to run out of time. I want to talk about what your, some new the new projects you're doing, but um, you've got new grandbabies and uh, tell us, tell us what's happening now with family. Oh, it's awesome. Um, our Daughter got married first and gave us a beautiful son-in-law, Caleb, who's just a son to me. Yes. He's just my third son. And so I love sweet. him. Dearly. He's added so much to our family. And they, um, their love produced little Tillman, and he's a year old. And um, when Tillman is going to, he just turned a year old, but when he's 16 months old, she will give him, be giving birth to a little girl. So I'm about Aww. to get a little granddaughter. Yay! But in between <laughs> them, our son, Weston, Married a beautiful girl named Ashley, one of my twins, got married yes. to a girl named Ashley, and they just gave us my namesake, Little Archer. So I Little love Archer it. is going to be three months old soon, and so oh. three grandbabies, wow, I had no idea. This is a really cool, you know, Brenda, because you've been there for a long time in this yes. grandmother world, but it's a pretty oh. beautiful world. I'm super excited, oh. and then... Um, Tim and Steve uh, and I uh, recorded a live album in Nashville. Oh. Um, and a little while back and so now we're working on bringing that to all the fans that have been so sweet to support our uh, music over the years and share stories with of, uh, us of how the music how they got saved at a concert or how the music changed their lives um and so we have a, a live 50th it's our 50th anniversary the archer started in 1972 i didn't join them in i was too young thank you jesus <laughs> Um, so I didn't work with the archers for 50 years, but anyway, the 50th, it, they started in 1972, yeah. so it's 2022. So we are bringing this project, um, we're putting it out as a live 50th anniversary album and it's going to, it's, I've already heard a ton of it. It's amazing. And of course ah. everything's digital now. So it sounds phenomenal. Yeah. I've heard, um, I've heard a lot of it already and we're excited. We're headed back to Nashville soon to, um, kind of clean up, you know, when you do live albums, we're going to go in and and refresh some of the vocals. We're, we're bringing some songs, I think, that oh. were great hits for us and, and maybe some other surprises as well. So it's such an honor to be doing this again with my big brothers. I'm their biggest fan. They're the greatest singers ever. Um, and yes. so I just was so 
blessed they asked their little sister on the journey. Um, oh. So we're just having the sweetest time. And we mm. really feel like God is going to anoint all of this whole thing, just a fresh and a new. Um, and so we're just really excited. And, and we have a, a, you can go to timarchermusic.com if you want to yeah. join. We, we kind of brought the fans on the journey. So we have a GoFundMe people can go to, but we're just super awesome. privileged to do it again. Yes, I cannot wait to hear that project. You have a beautiful family, and I'm friends with all you and your brothers. You all three are amazing human beings who have come to know Jesus on the journey, and I can't wait to hear the anointing and uh, just this this uh, reunion of your beautiful voices. I've had the privilege of singing with Steve, and I know there's, you have. there's just you nothing have like voice, that experience. <laughs> I don't know if all these people watching you know oh, you can sing. Just well, thank you. Voice. Well, you know, it, we all have so appreciated the ministry that has come out from your voices. And um, mm. uh, we're going to be praying for you in this project and uh, keep you. us posted. And uh, I, I can't thank wait you. to see you all again. And thank you for oh. sharing your heart and your time with us today. You are a jewel. Love <laughs> so you. Are you, you're the best. I love you. <laughs> and my love to everyone out there. Just thank keep you. Jesus first, everybody. It's the best. Amen. Amen. Right. Thanks for being with us. And friends, I thank you for being with us too. You have spent your time. It's valuable. And I know that you were blessed to hear the stories from Janice Archer Cruz that God is with us right there in the unexpected details and, and the turns and the changes the challenges that comes. And I know that you're facing challenges today, and I hope that you were deeply encouraged to hang on, to hold on, and let Jesus walk you through it. Thanks for being with us today, and I invite you again for next time. I'm Brenda Crouch. <laughs>